And as we start the session five, we want to see that we can at least finish off this brazen altar, this outer court, so that we can start to enter in to the holy place. Because it's in the holy place that we need to understand where everything comes together, where everything starts to take a different light. Because we need to die to our body. We need to die in our body. We need to die in our soul man, our mind, our will and our emotions. Because our mind and our will and our emotions stand in the way of the truths of the Father. Our intellectual reasoning of the things that we've been taught, of the things that we've been told, is what stands in the way of what the truth of this word says. And sometimes the truth is so clear, but we will not see it. Because the doctrines that we've been taught for so long are standing up against that which the Father wants to do in this hour. Because he's raising the standard. He's raising the standard. He's saying, no more. I'm going to raise the standard. Because when the enemy comes in like a flood, he will raise the standard Amen. against him. And the enemy has had full reign over this earth. Who is in control of this earth, does it say? Who is controlling this earth, does it say? Hasatan is the one that is reigning on this earth right now. The whole world, the Bible says, the whole world is under the sway of the enemy. But we just continue to sway with the enemy in the things that we've been taught, in the things that we've been said. And because the whole world is doing it, the church does it too. And this is the problem. But the Father is not going to stand for that anymore. And the Father is going to bring us back to truth. And you see, to break through truth, sure, it's not easy. And so I took a beating in my body this last session because I knew that there was a breakthrough that needed to come. There was an oppression that I needed to break through in. But the Father is going to have his way. And the things that need to come forth is not always easy. And it's definitely not what people want to hear. But he will speak his truth, irrespective of whether we in our mindsets like it or not, it doesn't matter. Because his truths will stand. So we are going to continue to look at John chapter 17, verse 3. Okay, we looked at everlasting life. Um, we need to put off the old man and put on the new. Let's go look at Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 10. We are still sitting here in this outer court. So let's go look at Colossians chapter 3. You must understand there is a war in the heavenlies going on. Why is there a war in the heavenlies? Because for very long, these truths have not gone forth. And now is the time that these truths need to go forth. So because of that, it's not easy to break through, to be able to come through the place of where there's been deception and lies for so long. So Colossians 3, verses 1 to 10 says, If then you were raised with Messiah, seek the matters which are above where Messiah is seated at the right hand of Yahuwah. You see, there's the difference. There's a difference between one who is seated in this outer court only and only looking at the fleshly things of our mind and our reasoning ways. And then there are those that are seated with the Father in heavenly places. So he wants us to come to the place where we've got to put off the old man to come into that place of where we start to be able to discern and start to be able to know truth in the innermost parts by the Ruach of Yahuwah. So, the mind, the matters above, not those on the earth. So it says, if then you were raised with Messiah, seek the matters which are above, where Messiah is seated at the right hand of Yahuwah. Mind the matters above, not those that are on earth. And you know what? It's amazing because there will be people that will argue with me about certain issues and certain things, but they have not seeked the Father to be able to find out what that truth is. They just go by what they've been told, and their minds will reason about what they've been told. But where did they take the time to seek the Father? Where did they take the time to be able to come and sit 
and his throne, where did they take the time to be able to come and wrestle with him in the spirit to be able to allow him to reveal the truth to them? Because let me tell you something. The Bible says, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened. Because if we seek, we shall find. But we need to seek the things of the, the Ruach. And we need to be able to lay aside our mindsets and our reasoning things to be able to come back to his truths and his way. And that takes seeking. And let me tell you, for, so there's some issues that I've wrestled with him for 15 years. If not longer. Because I say, Father, these things that you have to speak is very difficult. But these are truths that have not been spoken. But now is the time when he's going to restore. So he's saying, For you have died, and your life has been hidden with Messiah and Yahuwah. When Messiah, who is our life, is manifested, then you also shall be manifested with him in esteem, in glory. Therefore, put to death your members, which are on the earth, whoring, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, greed, gain, which is idolatry. Because these, because of these, the wrath of Yahuwah is coming upon the sons of disobedience. So understand, if we're going to continue in these wicked ways of ours, what does it say? Because the wrath of Yahuwah is going to come upon the sons of disobedience. So don't look at those. Don't look at the crowd. Don't look at all of those. Don't follow the crowd. Don't follow what the crowd is doing. Don't follow what everybody else is doing. Let's look to him. Because he says few, few are going to enter there. Few. Narrow is the gate that leads to life. And few are going to find it. You know why? Because everybody's following the crowd. If the crowd is doing it, let me do it too. But let me tell you something. If you're going to follow the bulk of the crowd, the crowd is coming into unity right now. The crowd is coming under the leadership of the Pope and the crowd is becoming one world religion, one world order, and that's where they're on their way to. And those are the sons of disobedience. So you're either going to be the sons of righteousness and do what's right, standing with the Father, or you're either going to be the sons of disobedience. And if the world is doing these things, we are a different generation. Amen. And we have to raise the standard of the Father. Therefore, put to death the members. Okay, we've read that. Because of the wrath of Yahuwah is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you also once walked when you lived in them. So if you did that in the world, when you are now a child of the Father, you don't continue to do the things that the world was doing. But now, also, put off these displeasures, wrath, evil, blasphemy, filthy talk from your mouth. So we've dealt with the things of understanding this flesh needs to die in the physical things, in the suffering that it needs to go through, in the pain that it needs to go through, in the brokenness that it needs to go through. But now, this is when we start to get deeper into the things that's got to do with the, with the spiritual things and the things of your mind, your will, your emotions, where we are to understand that we can murder people with our mouths that we are to understand that we can blaspheme, we can be evil, we have faulty talk. What talk do you have amongst yourselves? What talk do you talk? What does your eye see? What does the gates of your eyes look upon? What does your ears open up to? What does your mouth speak out of its mouth? These are the things that he's dealing with. These are the things that you need to deal with there by that brazen altar. These are the things that you need to deal with. Do not lie to each other. Since you have put off the old man with his practices and have put on the new one who is renewed in knowledge according to the likeness of him who created him. So if you're sure wouldn't do that, neither should we. Where there is no Greek or Yudim, circumcised and uncircumcised, foreigner, Scythian, slave, free, but Messiah in all and in all. Understanding, when it comes to the time, there's not going to be no Jew and no Gentile. We have been grafted into that house. There's only going to be one house. There's only going to be one. There's only going to be 12 gates in the city of Jerusalem for the 12 tribes 
Who are you? There's no denomination for Christianity. There's no denomination for Pentecostal, for Baptism, for Methodist. There's no gate for that. There are 12 gates, and those gates make up of the 12 tribes. So you're either grafted into one of those gates of the 12 tribes, but you are certainly not a denomination of your own, because he's not going to stand for a sixth stone. He's not going to stand for that sixth stone. Because that's what man has put there in order for them to be able to know what it means to be able to serve him. What they have formulated to serve him. They've actually created a golden calf. That's what they've done. So he says, Where there, okay, therefore, as chosen ones, did we declare that you are the chosen generation? Therefore, as chosen ones of Yahuwah, set apart and beloved, put on compassion, put on kindness, Put on humbleness of mind. Put on meekness. Put on patience. We need to be patient with one another. Because at the end of the day, we need to understand, not everybody has arrived where you are at. And sometimes that's one of the most difficult things for me, is to be able to have that patience. Because you see, I cannot measure people based on where I am at. That would be unfair. My walk is not your walk, and my call is not your call, and I can't expect you to do what I do. And I wouldn't expect you to do that either. It's like people say, oh, the anointing. I say, would you want to walk in my shoes? You're welcome. Please, you're welcome to come walk in my shoes. But you can't. Because you have to walk in your own. When I did recruitment, I did recruitment for nine years. I had a recruitment company. And I worked in recruitment. And I used to have people coming to see me for interviews all the time. And when they would come, they would put on their best speech. And then I'd ask them questions and they'd already programmed what, que- what they're going to answer the questions. And when they finished with their whole questioning, I'd look at them and say, so now tell me, who are you really? I don't want to hear who you're telling me you are. I want to hear who you really are. Because when we go for an interview, we're trying to impress the people about who we are. And that's just impressing them, but it's not really the real you. Abba wants you to be real with him. I'm real with my Abba. Because that's what he wants. He wants intimacy. And I have got no problem in exposing my sinful, evil ways. And that's why I say to you, you hear me, I wrestle with him. I'm not perfect. Far from perfect. I haven't even arrived anywhere yet. I'm far from having arrived. But I strive every day to just get that little bit closer to him. And if it means a little bit more dying in my flesh, so be it. So it says, bearing with one another, forgiving each other. If anyone has a complaint against another, indeed, as Messiah forgave you, so also you should. Above all, these put on love, which is a bond of perfection. Now you would see the love of Abba Father. Those who truly walk in Abba's ways, there is a love that comes from forth from them that doesn't come from their own. It's only the love of Abba Father. Only the love of Abba Father. And let the peace of you who are rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called, in one body, and be filled with thanks. It's like Linda turns around and she gets all excited and she says, and she says to me, she's so excited, she wants to almost jump out of her skin. Wow! I was writing about this seven years ago and the father is now just pretty little. When I wrote it, I didn't even understand it, but now I understand. And I said, we are, there's one spirit. There's one Ruach HaKodesh. There's one Ruach who speaks. And even if you didn't have the revelation then of what you were speaking, of what you were writing, but now is the time of the revealing of that revelation. That's what Raleen keeps saying. Every time I speak to Raleen, she'll say, it's now the time. It's time. I keep hearing this. I've got my friend in Israel. She says to me, it's time. She even sent me a big clock. It's time. It's time of the revealing of the sons of Yahuwah. It's time. Now is the time. <laughs> this is so cool. Let the word of Messiah dwell in you richly. Let the word of Messiah dwell in you richly. Do you know his word? Has he revealed and opened up the word to you? Have you wrestled with him long enough for him to have opened up the word to you? Or do you just know what you've been taught? 
Have you truly gone and wrestled with him and sat in his presence and seek his face and said, Father, reveal to me this word or are you only going based on what you've been told? Because it's not about being based on what we've been told. It's about wrestling until he reveals his word. So let the word of Messiah dwell in you richly, teaching, admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing with pleasure in your hearts to the master in psalms and songs and praise and spiritual songs. And that is why, as you can see, th that's my happy place. This is my happy place. It doesn't matter how tired I am, but this will keep me going for hours. Because that's where I love to be. I love to worship and praise my King. So we are now going to look at, we start now to see allowing ourselves as we die and allow the rulership of Yeshua to dominate our lives. We see in 1 Peter 2, we've read this, we prophesied this, we're going to read it again because this is Abba's plan. This is his plan in this, this outer court. This is his plan. So let's just go read again. 1 Peter chapter 2. Your prophetic word that was declared over you this morning. Let's go read it again so that you can understand the prophetic word that he has spoken to you. And it's in 1 Peter 2 verses... One, well, it's not that one, but we can carry on. <laughs> 1 Peter 2, 1 to 5, and it says, Having put aside then all evil and all deceit, and hypocrisy, and endings, and all evil words, as newborn babes desire the unadulterated milk of the word, in order that you grow by it. So we need to have the unadulterated milk of his word. If indeed you have tasted the master is good, drawing near to him, a living stone, rejected indeed by man, but chosen by Yahuwah and precious. So are you precious? Yes. You also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a set apart priesthood to offer up spiritual slaughtering offers acceptable to Yahuwah through, Yahuwah, through Yeshua Messiah. So you are now going to have to raise up as that priest that's going to offer him the perfect sacrifice of your life and being able to become a burning coal that must burn a flame for him. So we are going to see now Abba's plan of this priesthood because understand, this is what you're being told. You are being set apart to become a priesthood and this is the priesthood that's now going to be the only ones. You see, Israel was allowed to come here. Only the priests really went and washed their hands because of the sacrifices. So you were able to walk in and come and give your sacrifice to the, to the priests. But the only ones that went in here was the priest, and the only one who went in there was the high priest. So now we're going to look at this priesthood. And the priesthood is Abba's plan. But it starts in the outer court. If you don't die to yourself, you are never going to enter through the door. So understand, here again, you got the door. There you had the gate. Yeah, you got the door. You're sure is that door. So we need to understand we got to go through the door. And the door is again made up of the, the blue, of the purple, of the scarlet, of the fine linen, of the white. The fullness of you, who your sure is. This is when we enter. This was your sure being our salvation and, sanct and justification. This is when your sure is the sanctification. This is where your sure sanctifies us. And this is where your sure is the king. So we need to, as we enter through there, we need to understand your sure being the king. And so, this is now as we go through the sanctification process. This is the receiving. This area here is the receiving of the Ruach HaKodesh. Remember he said, I am the way. That was through this door. I am the truth. That was through the gate. I am the truth. So the door that we enter through now is the door of the truth. And everything that is in here is about the Ruach HaKodesh. So now we are going to see the reason why the Father has given us the Ruach HaKodesh. 
It's not so that we can shake and shiver like a leaf and say, oh, I can feel his presence. And I say, okay, if you feel his presence, you better get up from that floor and be a changed person. Because no one can come before the presence of the Father and stay the same. No one can come before a holy year and leave the same way. That's impossible. Because when he comes into the room, you have to bow to his rulership, to his kingship. So, we are going to see, Yahushua, we already spoke, Yahushua was the way, that was the resurrection. But Yah is when we are going to understand the holy place is where the, only the priests were allowed to enter. The work that they needed to do was for the Father. So understand, this Yah is still about you. This is all still about you. This is still where you're dealing with you. This is about serving other Father. The priests were called to serve Him. And you see, this is why so many people are still sitting right here. Because they still make it about them. Their praise is about them. Their praise is about themselves. Their praise is about, oh, my family, and a this, and a this. And it's all about that. It's all about yourself. It's all about what he must still do for you. But when you come into the place of the holy place, that's when it's got nothing to do with you. It's everything about serving him. Because he's got need of you. Do you not understand? He's got need of you. You are not just sitting in a church pew to warm the seat. You have been created and chosen and appointed royal, royal priesthood to be able to serve the king and do his work in this earth. And each one of us has got a different work to do. We don't all have the same work to do, but we are called to do his work. So, there is a protocol... There is a protocol that comes of here. They needed to dress in linen in order to go into the holy place. This is the place where we really start to see the soul man. We really start to see the mind, the will, and our emotions having to really come and be surrendered. Because why? When we start to understand what the menorah symbolizes, when we start to understand what the table of showbread symbolizes, then we start to understand what it is that we need to be able to be dealing with. So everything here is about the word. Everything here is about truth. Everything here is about the Ruach. Because remember, Yeshua was the way, Yeshua was the truth. So everything here is about truth. And truth has to do with his word. And truth has to do with the Ruach. He's the Ruach of truth. Yeshua said, I will bring the spirit of truth. He's the Holy Spirit, the set-apart spirit of truth. This is the day of Shavuot. And when we truly understand the fullness of Shavuot, we understand why the Ruach was actually given. Because he was going to give them the Ruach already on Mount Sinai, but unfortunately they are the ones that stopped him. So let's go look at John chapter 14, verses 12 to 26. John chapter 14, verses 12 to 26, and it says, Truly, truly, I say to you, who, he who believes in me and the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these he shall do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask my Father, that I shall do, in order that the Father might be esteemed in the Son. If you ask whatever in my name, I shall do it. If you love me, you will guard my commands. So you see, the difference when you receive the Ruach is you're not doing the commands out of a law. You are doing commands out of the love that you have for other Father. Your desire is nothing more than serving Him. Your desire is nothing more than loving Him. And because you love Him, you want to obey Him. Because you love Him, you want to come in line with His Word. And I shall ask the Father, and He shall give you another Helper, to stay with you forever. The spirit of truth. So it's the set apart spirit of truth. Whom the world is unable to see. You see we cannot see the Ruach of Yahuwah. He's not manifested in the flesh. Because he's the breath of Yahuwah. He's Yahuwah manifested in the Ruach. Because it doesn't, because it doesn't see him. Or know him. But you know him. 
because he stays with you and he shall be in you. I shall not leave you orphans. I am coming to you yet a little while and the world no longer sees me, but you shall see me because I live and you shall live. In that day, you shall know that I am in my father and you are in me and I am in you. He who possesses my commands and guards them, it is he who loves me. So tell me something. If you truly love him, you will possess his commands. That's what it means to love him. And he who loves me shall be loved by my father, and I shall love him and manifest myself to him. Yehuda, not the one from Kiroth, said to him, Master, what has, what has come about that you are about to manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Yoshua answered him, if anyone loves me, now you must hear how many times he says, if anyone loves me, he shall guard my word, and my father shall love him, and we shall come to him and make our stay in him. So you see, what is the father's desire? That he may dwell in you. That he finds a tabernacle in which to dwell. And he's not going to dwell in a tabernacle made of man hand, man's hands. We are going to see a tabernacle being built in, we are going to see a temple going up in Jerusalem. Oh, for sure. That temple of theirs, they want to build it. But it's not the presence of the Father that is going to be there. He who does not love me does not guard my words. So you see, it's got everything to do with love. So because you love him, you're going to guard his words. Because you love him, you're going to do what he's telling you to do. Because you love him, you're going to follow him. He who does love me, does, he who does not love me, does not guard my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but of the Father who sent me. These words I have spoken to you while still with you. But the Helper, the set-apart Spirit, whom the Father shall send in my name, he shall teach you all and remind you of all that I said to you. So you see, the set-apart Ruach of Yahuwah, I'm very sorry to say, is not come into this earth so that we can have a nice experience of shaking like a leaf and rolling on the floor and cackling like a chicken and being able to make sounds like dogs because that is a counterfeit spirit that is called the Kundalini spirit and that is not who my father is and that is what's been manifested right now because people only want the manifestation that caters to their flesh they want a manifestation. They want to go into the church and have a manifestation of that which caters to the outer body of man. But they do not want to have an encounter with the Ruach that's going to truly be able to bring them to a dime of their flesh. And there's the difference. Because you see, it's like I said, I was in Elsie's ministry that she used to go to. And, and I used to look at this. And these people used to worship for four hours, dancing. Oh, I loved it. And this woman spoke a powerful word, but I never saw any change in any people. Because the people didn't go there to be able to really hear the word and put it into practice. Sure, it was a good word, but I'm not going to put it into practice. I go there for four hours to have fun. So I can roll on the floor and laugh and do all these nice things. But there was no change in the people. And that's when you start to see, if people are manifesting themselves in these places but their lives are not changing to become set apart and holy for the Father, then what spirit actually came into the room? Was it really the spirit of the Father? He's a consuming fire. If he comes into a room, you will know all about it. We haven't even tasted or touched the glory of Yahuwah because that's holiness in all its fullness. And let me tell you something. He will humble us to our knees. We will fall flat on our face. And there is a reverence and a holiness that we need to return back to that we've lost. <laughs> so we're going to see in Exodus chapter 19, 5 to 10. We've already read this, but we're going to see again. Why was the Ruach given? What was the purpose of understand Shavuot? is the feast of what you know as Pentecost. And the feast of Pentecost was to fulfill what happened on Mount Sinai in Exodus chapter 19. That was when the Ruach was to be given with tongues of fire upon the hearts of the people to write his Torah upon their hearts. But instead, this didn't happen. So we're going to quickly look at Exodus chapter 19. 
We've read the scripture, but we're quickly going to bring it into a via so that we can get the full picture of what we really understand of what it means to have received the Ruach of Yahuwah. So 5 says, and now if you diligently, remember this is part of the prophetic word that was being prophesied over you, and if you diligently obey my voice, and you shall guard my covenant, then you shall be my treasured possession above all the peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be, my, you shall be to me a reign of priests and set-apart nation. Those are the words which you are to speak to the children of Israel. And Moshe came and called for the elders of the people and set them all these words Yahuwah commanded them. And all the people answered together and said, All that Yahuwah has spoken, we shall do. You see, that's what we do. All that you speak, I shall do. Until the first little test comes our way. And then we start to not want to do it. But praise the Father, He's very merciful and gracious with us. He really is. And I need you to understand. You know what? I really need you to understand something. I know that this is a hard word. And I know that this is not easy. And I want you to understand... All the Father expects you to do is take the first step. Because if you take the first step, he takes the two to follow. You just need to come before him and say, Father, you know, I don't know how to do all of this. But I am wanting to be a willing and obedient servant. And as I take this first step, please will you help me. And believe me, he will. And all the people answered together and said, All that Yahuwah has spoken, we will do. And Moshe brought back the words of Yahuwah to, of, of the words of the people to Yahuwah. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, See, I'm coming to you in the thick cloud so that the people hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. So understand, he's saying, The people are going to believe the words of Moshe forever. So where was Moshe ever done away with? The words of Moshe will stand forever. I ask you today, who was standing with, with Yahushua on the Mount of Transfiguration? Moshe, representing what? Torah. And who was the other one? Elijah, representing what? Prophets. Prophets. Moshe, representing the truth of his word. Elijah, representing the spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. Spirit and truth. Spirit and truth always walking hand in hand. So now I'm just going to quickly show you here. Just go into the next page. Okay, I just, just look there and see. The, ne the next page, when we look at from verses 18, let's just quickly look at verse 18 of uh, Exodus chapter 20. Now we, you know, he's given these commands. And we need to understand, did he stop speaking the commands or did they stop him from speaking the commands? So he was still speaking the commands. But all of a sudden, guess what happens? Listen. And all the people saw the thunder and the lightning and the flashes and the voice of the shofar and the mountain smoke and the people saw it and they trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moshe, You speak with us. We hear, but let not Yahuwah speak to us, lest we die. So you see, many of us do not really want Yahuwah to speak. Because you see, when Yahuwah speaks, <laughs> there's going to be a death that's going to have to take place in your body. For sure. And said to Moshe, You speak with us and we hear. But let not Yahuwah speak with us lest we die. So that's why we want to chase after what the pastors say. We don't really want to seek the Father for ourselves and hear what he has to say. And Moshe said to the people, Do not fear, for Yahuwah has come to prove you. In order, listen carefully, do not fear, for Yahuwah has come to prove you. In order that his fear be before you, so that you do not sin. So if his fear will be before them, if we fear Yahuwah enough, we will not sin. You see, it's the fear of Yahuwah that's the beginning of wisdom. And we need to fear Yahuwah. Because when we fear Yahuwah, then we will stop our sinful ways. But, it, but you see, we do not fear him because we have this teaching that he's just going to keep forgiving us, forgiving us, forgiving us. And nothing's going to happen to us because we're under grace. But that's why he said... You need to fear me 
to know that I am a consuming fire and that I am the one who's going to judge if you will continue in your sinful ways. And that's why he wanted to put the fear of Yahuwah within us so that we would not sin. Because the fear of Yahuwah is the reverence, the awe, the holiness, the purity. The more we look to him, the more we see our sinful way. The more we look to him, the more we understand that he has done it all. And even though I fall, he comes and picks me up on eagle's wings once again. And he knows, he knows if the heart is truly repentant or not. And he helps us. Because only he can do that. Um, we were we were a reign of priests and a set apart nation. He's still looking for a priesthood to this day that will set him apart. So now we're going to look at the menorah. We're going to look at this menorah. We're going to look at the menorah that is in the Mishkan. The menorah represents Yahushua. That is the light of the word. He's the light that lights up the word. And he's the light of the world. He's the one that has come to light everything in our path. And his, his word is the lamp unto our feet. There was no windows in the Mishkan. So the only light is the light of the menorah. So in the holy place there's only one light and the light is of the menorah. So we need to be enlightened by Yahushua himself in order for us to be able to know the scriptures. He enlightens us. Did you hear what it said? He opened their eyes so that they would be able to understand the scriptures. So sometimes the scriptures are blinded to us. We can read the same scriptures. One person can read that scripture and see it one way, and another person will read the, the scripture, the one whom the Father is revealing the truth to. But the one that is reading the scripture cannot see it because his eyes have not been opened to that, because he's still sitting in the deception of his lies. So two people can read the same scripture and interpret it in a different way. Because one has been enlightened by the truth of his word, and the other one has not. Because the one is still seeing the scripture through the deception of the lies that they've been taught. And there's the difference. Take what away. Oh, okay. So we see that there's oil. Oil that goes into the menorah. The oil is the purest hard-pressed oil. So through his trials, he became the oil, the olive press. Where did he go? He went through Gethsemane. And this is where he was crushed in Gethsemane, to the point of where he actually sweated tears of blood, drops of blood. Now, Gethsemane, in the Hebrew language, Gethsemane, Shemani, Gethsemane means press oil. So Gethsemane, actually means an oil press. How beautiful is that? In Hebrew, it is in the purest form. He prayed three times, and the, the, the process of the olive oil coming through is a three-part process. The first pressing is the purest for the temple. It's the first fruits. Yeshua is our first fruits. He was the purest oil that was being able. He was the center candle there. That center candle is the one that feeds all the other candles. He's the fourth candle of the menorah that is the Shemesh candle that is the center candle that feeds the rest. And that's the fourth feast. The fourth feast in the seven feasts of Yahuwah. The fourth feast is the feast of Shavuot, which is everything about Yahushua giving us the Ruach of Yahuwah. He was crushed for our iniquities. Isaiah 53 verse 5. Let's look at Isaiah 53 verse 
Isaiah 53 says, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our crookedness. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Now understand, this menorah was made out of pure gold. There was no infilling. Every other item, the table of showbread, the altar of incense, the Ark of the Covenant, outside it was layered with gold, but inside it was acacia wood, the wood that was made in your anointing oil. So all these was made out of acacia wood, except the menorah that was that was pure gold, beaten, beaten to bring forth this whole menorah. So he too was beaten, he was pierced, he was crushed through, for our crookedness. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, but his stri by his stripes we are healed. So we too need to be crushed for him to get the purest oil from us so that the first fruits of our life can be offered to him. So that's why we need to become the first fruits offering for him. And that's why we too need to go through the oil press. Remember, the ten virgins. The ten virgins had oil in their lamps. How can I give away an oil? So five of those virgins were ready, five were not. What happened to the five that gave away their oil? The, the, the ones that ran out of oil. If the oil represents the crushing that you've been through, the more crushing you're going through, the more oil you have. How can I give away an oil that I have been crushed to produce? I can't give that oil to you because the more I'm crushed, the more my oil is filling my lamp. So the more I humble myself, the more crushing I go through, the more pressing I'm going through, the more oil is coming out. These were the ones that were not willing to be crushed. Therefore, they ran out of oil because they weren't al allowing themselves to go through the crushing process. So those were the five virgins that were not willing to allow that olive press to press them, to be able to break them down so that they could become that purest oil of the first fruits. So you see, if you want to be the five virgins that are going to be the ones that are going to be able to go into a place that's going to reign and rule with Messiah Yeshua, you have to allow him to put you through that olive press so that you can continue to have oil in your lamp. So the more crushing you go through, the more oil you're going to have. So the more, so you see, what people do not understand is that they think that this anointing just falls from the sky. The more anointing you have, the more crushing you've been through, the more broken you've been, the more trials and tests you've had, the more, the more pressure there's been in your life, the more, the more he's crushing you, the more the oil is pouring, the more he's crushing, the more the oil is pouring, and you are not going to run out of oil in your lamp. But if you are those other five foolish virgins, they weren't allowing him to be able to crush them. And so they only had a little bit of oil. But now they want to come to the other virgins and say, give us of your oil. How do I give you something that I myself have had to go through to get this oil? I cannot give you that oil. It's impossible. I cannot. So do you understand? This oil is not going to come from just going to flow from heaven. This oil is coming from you being an oil press yourself. You're going to have to go through the oil press yourself. His anointing can come from less of me and more of him. Less of me and more of him, Abba, is what I always tell him. All the furniture in the tabernacle is overlaid with gold. All the furniture that's here. There was brass and silver. Here is all gold. So gold... Gold is his glory. Gold is divinity. Gold is kingship. Gold is beauty. You are beautiful beyond description. Gold is precious, holiness, majesty, <laughs> righteousness. The menorah was pure gold, made of beaten, made of beaten gold. Yeshua was beaten for us. And we will be beaten and shaped into his image. Our lives need to portray him. This is where we need. This is where we need our minds, our will and our emotions to be submitted to him. The menorah is made up of the seven spirits. So there is just something that I just remembered that I missed and I really need to go back into this. 
I'm sorry, I, I missed this page. I quickly just want to go to the door. Because remember we said, yeah, he was the gate, yeah, is the door. I'm just going to go back one page. Yoshua being the door there, I want us to go and read John chapter 10 because he just, he spoke in my ear and said, you've missed something. I said, what I miss? He says, you missed the door. I said, oh. So now I must go back because I, I said, I, I'll just leave it. But he spoke to me and said, you will not leave it because it's important. You cannot come in through the back door. You cannot jump the fence. You've got to only come in through that door. Again, there isn't another door. So again, let's go look at John chapter 10 because I need you to understand this. We're going to read John chapter 10 from verse 1. So he has a little bit of reading that we're going to need to go through, but it's important that we need to be able to look at this. For Abba, tell me to tell, for Abba to tell me to go back, this is important. Truly I say to you, he who does not enter through the door into the sheepfold, but climbs in up by another way, that one is a thief and a robber. So what door do you want to go through? Are you going through? Remember, this is the door. It's the door of him being kingship. This is not the way of the outer court. This is the door of where there's sanctification. This is the door of where he's ruler king. This is the door of where he's got to be king of your life. And this is the door of where he wants sanctification out of your life. So he's saying, you cannot come in. If you want to come into the sheepfold, you cannot climb up by another way. The one who, he, who is doing this is a thief and a robber. But he who enters through the door is the shepherd of the sheep. And the doorkeeper opens to, for him. The sheep hear his voice. You see, there's the difference. Are we truly hearing his voice? Whose voice are we listening to? Who have we, we, who have we been following? Which voices have we been listening to? Have we truly been listening to the truth of his word that's spoken through his word? Or are we just listening to the deceptive voices that have been speaking in our ears for so long? And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought them out, his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. So once again, you're seeing us following Yoshua, because he will speak to you and you'll say, this is the way, walk you in it. And this is how Elsie and I have to walk with the Father. If you come with us, if we do a prophetic mission, there is Alani who's been with us on a prophetic mission. We don't go do all this major... Okay, Elsie does a lot of the preparation of the places where we've got to go to so she can understand the places where we've got to go, the things that have got to happen. But when we get there... I am oblivious to what the Father's going to do. I haven't gone and studied something on deliverance and something about this demon and this demon and this thing and this stronghold and this principality. I haven't gone and studied that. I get there and I say, okay, Father, you're sending me out. What do you need to do? And then step by step, he starts to lead. Hey, Lonnie, hey. All of a sudden, as we get to this place, he starts to open my eyes and he says, this, 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 and then we just start to flow. And the next minute, it just starts flowing. And the next thing, when we deal with this, we deal with this, we deal with this. And the next thing you look again, you think, wow, what did he just do yet? You didn't do anything. You just pitched up. Oh, oh, we won't go there. And they shall by no means follow a stranger, but shall flee from him. Because they do not know the voice of strangers. Yoshua, you see, in this place, you will not know the voice of strangers. You are going to know, you're going to be a sheep that knows his voice. And his voice you're going to follow alone. And when someone starts to speak something that's not truth, you will know. Because you know his truth. Because he's been speaking to you for long. And you know it in your knowing that this is the truth. It's not because you've got it from man. It's not because you've gone and got it from any person. But it's because he's been speaking, speaking, speaking to you for Yes. Yoshua used the figure of speech, but they did not know what he what he had to say, what he was saying to them. You see, Yoshua was using language that they couldn't even understand and discern. Yoshua therefore said to them again, Truly, truly I say to you, I am the door 
of the sheep. So he's the door of the sheep. And all who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. Whoever enters through me, he shall be saved and shall go in and shall go out and find pasture. So there will be a peace that's going to come into your life when you start being led by him. The thief does not come except to steal, to slander and to destroy. I come that you might possess life and that you might possess it beyond measure. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So you see, what is he going to require of us? Are we willing to lay down our life for others? But the hireling, and not being a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches the sheep and scatters them. So you see, that's what's going to happen with these pastors in these last days. All of a sudden, when the popo has to hit the fan, when the destruction starts to come, they're going to be the first ones to run away. And then where's the sheep? The sheep are all going to be scattered. Now the hireling flees because he is a hireling and he's not concerned about the sheep. You see, all he was in it was for the gain anyway. He wasn't really in it to be able to do the things of the father. He was only in it for the gain for the money and for the fame and for the fortune and for his name to be raised up. I am the good shepherd and I know mine and mine know me. Even as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay my life for the sheep and other sheep. I Now listen carefully to what he says. This is the Jews that are there, but listen carefully to what he says in verse 16. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. I have to bring them as well and they shall hear my voice and they shall be one flock and one shepherd. So that are going to be the ones that are going to come from the nations that are also going to listen to his voice and that are going to start coming in. Because of this, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to receive it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to receive it again. This command I have received from my Father again there came a division amongst the Yodim because of these words. Now, if you look, you see, because that's what happens. When Yoshua starts to speak truth, and when people start to listen to truth, but they don't quite understand, there comes division amongst the people. Because when truth comes, and you set in the mindset that you have, truth comes, and then there starts to be division amongst the people. Because they start to reason, and they start to be divided amongst each other, because they don't want to really accept truth. And then there was a division amongst them. From verse 25, Yoshua then, I have told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness concerning me. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep. And I said to you, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give them everlasting life. So you see, this is going to be the everlasting life that we're going to come into. I give them everlasting life and they shall by no means ever perish and no one shall snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. They are echad. They are one. So that is what it means, him being the door. Now do you see how important and profound this was why he spoke in my ear and said you missed something. I'm busy talking and I'm hearing him say, you missed something. I said, what did I miss? You missed the door. So we've now covered the door. So now we're going to be able to look at this, the seven spirits. The menorah is made up of seven feasts. It's made up of seven spirits. And that seven spirits is spoken of in Isaiah 11 verse 2. I'll say, how are we doing for time? Okay. So we're going to look at the first one. So if we're going to look at the menorah, we're going to start with the first one. So the first one, the first, the first candle is the spirit of might. The spirit of might is the word Gabura. I've gone and just did a study on this. I'm going to speak it quickly to you. The might stands for strength, might, valor, bravery, victory, mighty deeds of Yahuwah. That's what the spirit of might is. Then the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom 
is the concordance number H2451. Kochma, which is wisdom, which is skill in war, which is wisdom in administration. There's Miss Anson. Her second name is Sophia, which means wisdom. And she truly has wisdom from the Father in administration. Shrewdness, prudence in religious things, wisdom in ethical things. Spirit of knowledge. Spirit of knowledge is perception, skill. It's the, word, it's the concordance number H1847, Duff, which is knowledge, perception, skill, discernment, understanding, wisdom. A person is cunning and aware. And then the most important as we get to the Shamesh candle, the fourth candle of the menorah again, is the spirit of Yahuwah. Now, the spirit of the Yahuwah is the inspiring state of prophecy. This is truly when Yahuwah operates through his prophetic, the prophetic to utter instructions or warnings. That's why he needs his prophets that come with the prophetic messages to be able to warn the people, to be able to warn them of the things to come, to prepare the people for what is ahead. Administrative power, endowing, Men with various gifts. This is when he comes the, with the spirit of Yahuwah, endows men with many gifts. Because he gave us the nine gifts of the spirit and he gave us the nine fruits of the spirit. The manifestation in the glory. So this is when we see then the manifestation of the glory. This is why people are not open to the Ruach. Because they are not receiving the full flow. People have intellectual soul knowledge but are not led by the Ruach. So this is why it's because people do not really have the fullness of the spirit of Yahuwah. They have truly received a counterfeit spirit because they do not walk in spirit and truth. And a lot of people operate in a counterfeit spirit. And they are operating out of the soul knowledge. Intellectualism. And unfortunately, this is very sad because in the Torah movement, in the Messianic Torah movement, in the movement of where there's a great awakening now within the body of Messiah where people are returning back to Torah. But there's such a grave danger because against them I speak to you. Because they have become so intellectual. Because all they're seeking for is the next revelation and the next revelation. And now all of a sudden the earth is flat. And now all of a sudden it's this. And then we argue about all these ridiculous things that make no sense to anybody. And we will argue about these things. And we, instead of us keeping our eyes on our Messiah and the things that he's telling us to do, we will argue about things that is not even relevant. And if we finally start to pray, not go into our intellectual thing of someone gone and done a little study, and now we've gone and followed someone's study, if we just start to seek the Father, the Father will reveal truth to us. But now we become divided amongst each other in our little pet little doctrines that we start to follow once again because the enemy is very clever with us. And then we argue about the name. And then we argue about the calendar. And then we argue about all these things. And at the end of the day, if we just come back, you know what I say to people? I say, stop all your stuff. Stop everything that you're doing. Get back to the Father. Get back to the prophetic. Because he's the one using the prophets to do the prophetic thing. But then I've got teachers wanting to come and tell me I'm not on the right calendar. But who's doing the prophetic work? Is it the teacher? So who is he going to give the truth to? Exactly. But then they are the ones arguing. But who's the one doing the work? So understand, I need to hear from the Father. Because he's chosen the people that need to do the work that needs to be done. And so they are the ones that have got to go and do the work. And so when I have people with their intellectual mindset coming to me and say, oh, Natalia, you know what? You are just on the wrong calendar. You need to follow this in our calendar because now we are following the sun and we're following this and that. And I say, excuse me? I have been doing the Father's work since 2009. And Father has had me prophetically in the right place at the right time to be able to do the work that he's got to do. And we have seen hey, manifestations of things that we can't even understand. Imagine being on the island of Patmos 
exactly at the time of the calendar when you are spotting the new moon and exactly at the time of when the revelation sign is being, being spotted in the heavens. And you are exactly on the island of Patmos at exactly the time where that revelation, the, the woman of, of, of the book of Revelation where she's giving birth and you are happening to be on the island of Patmos exactly on the day of Yom Teruah when this very thing is taking place in the heavens. And now he gets you to start to prophesy and start to do the things of the alignments that need to take place. Now someone with the intellectual, the intellectual mind wants to come and argue with me and say, you are on the wrong calendar. And I say to them, no worry. You carry on in doing what you do, I'll do what I have to do. But this is where we've got to. Because now, unfortunately, the Torah movement have become more intellectual than they're actually being led by the Ruach. And I come, up, up, I come against this all the time. And I've just got to the place that I'm saying, you know what, I'm not even going to worry about that anymore. I'm not even going to dispute it anymore. If you want to follow that way, follow you that way. Because let me tell you something. When I start telling you about the prophetic things tomorrow, may the Father grant me the grace that I can start to share with you about the prophetic things that the Father did. If I was not on the calendar that he told me to be on, Linda's not here, but Yolanda is here, Carlene is here. What was the manifestation of we saw what was happening on the day of Yom Teruah, the bride that he brought forth? From, from Tel Aviv and then someone wants to come talk to me how the heck did he orchestrate all of that no man can orchestrate that because he is having to bring a prophetic utterance a prophetic message a birthing of what he's got to do and you are just a vessel that's got to do it and you've got to hear his voice and you've got to be at the right place at the right time in order to do the work but now intellectualism comes in and comes and argues with you because you happen to be operating in hearing and obeying and now intellectualism comes in and starts the reasoning mind starts to argue with what the prophetic is doing so do you understand why in this area the soul man needs to get out of the way because the soul man cannot reason things out. They cannot reason it out. Because the father is a prophetic. It says here that the spirit of Yahuwah is inspiring state of prophecy. Prophetic to utter instructions, warnings, the prophetic work that needs to be done. That's the spirit of Yahuwah. Then there's the spirit of the fear of Yahuwah, which is Yira, which is the fear, the terror, the fearing. In all, fear of Yah, respect, reverence, piety, revered. This is one of the biggest problems why most people do not have wisdom th that is tied into the understanding. So wisdom and understanding come together. And the wisdom and the understanding needs to come together in the fear of Yahuwah. And that's why we have no fear and that's why we have no wisdom. Because the problem is we do not fear Yahuwah. We just carry on doing our own thing without fearing him. Proverbs 9 verse 10 says, The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So it is all tied to fearing Him, which is love and respect. We need to be these that need to be led by Him. The spirit of understanding is concordance number H998, Bina. Understanding, discernment, act, faculty, object, personified, perfectly understanding wisdom. Then there's the spirit of counsel, which is etza, etza, counsel, advice, purpose. So I just feel we can stop here, because then tomorrow we will go into the table of showbread, we will understand the altar of incense, and we finish off with the Ark of the Covenant. So, I feel that we've done enough tonight. I feel that we've done enough today. I feel that the Father has really spoken a lot into our spirits. And we need to understand that in this area here, this area here, is really where we need to be able to deal because understand something. What happened to man in the Garden of Eden? What did man eat from? They ate from the tree of knowledge of good 
and evil. So the knowledge that we have acquired in the many things that we have acquired might look good, but it actually turns out in the end to be evil. And that is why the Father is so desperately trying to get us back to the life. Because you see, when we finally lay down our intellectual reasoning and our mindsets, we will start to understand what it truly means to be led by the Ruach, to be led by the seven spirits of Yahuwah, to obey the seven feasts of Yahuwah, to understand the seven churches of Yahuwah, because they're all tied in to the seven days of creation. So it's very deep. But that is why when the Ruach of Yahuwah was given to us, the Ruach of Yahuwah was given to us as the ultimate teacher. There's no one that can teach us better than the Ruach of Yahuwah. If we are willing to just set ourselves apart and truly seek his face, he will teach us his ways. So Abba, my Father, I want to praise and I thank you, Father. Thank you, my King, for your sure truly being the door. Thank you, my King, for this day. Thank you, my King, for the grace that you have given us, Father. I know that we've received a mouthful. But I praise and I thank you, my King, that you are the one that will be exalted. Father, we do not want to be a sheep <laughs> that is going to try and enter through a back door. We want to be a sheep that hears your voice and a voice of a stranger we shall not follow because, Father, so many voices are going to speak in these last days. So many deceptive, deceptive things are coming now upon the body of Messiah to be able to lead us astray, to be able to bring dissensions, to be able to bring divisions. We know of people, Father. We have people, friends of ours, that have actually... That they don't even want to fellowship with us because of little doctrines that divide us. Abba, my Father, please will you forgive us? Please will you forgive us? Forgive us, Abba. Forgive us where we have not truly walked in your ways. Forgive us for where we have not understood what was your purpose and your plan for the from the beginning. Forgive us, Father, where we have not truly reverenced you for who you are. Forgive us where we have not understood the, the role of why you gave us the Ruach HaKodesh. Forgive us because we have not even understood our Messiah who died for us that all we want is just to receive the salvation and this free gift to heaven. But we have not understood the pattern of the Mishkan and what you are trying to put us through. And forgive us where we've resisted you so many times where your Ruach has spoken to us in a gentle, quiet spirit leading us in so many different times. But we will choose not to listen because we will reason in our minds, because we will wrestle in our flesh and because we will not surrender to you and your ways but I thank you Abba my father that truly in the hour that we are in you are doing a might and great restoration work I'm humbled before you father I'm so humbled before you my king I'm humbled I'm humbled before you Abba and I humble myself before you father and I say please start with me Start with me, do the great work that you need to do in me, to be able to break down everything with me that is not according to your way, not according to your pattern, where I myself is still walking in the ways of my flesh, where I will wrestle so many times and I'm not obedient, Father. And I ask you to please forgive me. And I pray for all of these, Father. I pray for all these beautiful sheep that you have brought this weekend, Father, that they will truly be a sheep that will hear your voice and the voice of a stranger they shall not follow. And they will be a sheep that is going to be able to be raised up, to be a priesthood for you so that you have more on the earth that is going to be able to do your work, that is going to be able to be your mighty intercessors, that is going to be able to be the ones that are going to be able to start standing in the gap for your people, Father. And they will start to do the greater work that they were created to do. There's nothing that you desire more than one to be able to come into the fullness of its call. One who starts walking in the fullness of a call is one that is going to send a thousand to fly. But as more of us come together, it's ten thousand and so it multiplies, Father. And so I praise and I thank you, Father, that as we go in sleep tonight, Father, will you give us peaceful rest? Will you allow us to be able to be enfolded in your wings, covered by your wings? 
that we will truly be able to experience your presence and that you will hold us close to your bosom, my Father, and let us be able to have our ear at your heart to be able to hear your heartbeats, bringing us the shalom that we need in all the truth that has come. And so I praise and I thank you for this in your choice name. Amen.